Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Daisy. For today's video, I am going to be reading some of my subscribers' scary stories. So if you guys are interested, grab your snacks, grab your cobija, and let's get straight into it. Let's start off with our first story. Hi Daisy, my name is Andres. Nice to meet you. Greetings from Colombia. I'm new to your channel. A very good channel, by the way. Thank you so much, Andres. Thank you so much. I see you share people's scary stories. I will trust you with one of my own. I really hope you like it and I look forward to hearing from you sharing it. If that is so, I will continue sending you my stories that happened to me. I have a lot of stories and all of them are real. I am a doctor and a professor at a university. I teach at a medical school. Out of respect, prudence, and student safety, I cannot tell you the city or the name of the university, but I can assure you that what happened to me is completely real. One of the floors of the university is built in the image and likeliness of a real hospital, but without real patients, only simulation machines that in personal opinion are very, very realistic. They breathe, speak, and have a pulse and temperature like a real person with the objective of training students in the most real possible environment. The hospital is designed in a series of corridors that connect with each other forming a rectangle. But when you reach the end of the corridors, you have to go back since the back exit was closed a long time ago because some students used it to enter and leave without prior notice and or without permission. Due to the cost of instruments and simulators, it is important that they enter with certain clothes clothing always announced and authorized. In all of the corridors, there are several rooms, each with a specific purpose, such as a surgery room, ICU room, gynecology room, pediatrics, etc. The surgery area is where I give my classes because of the fact that the rooms are larger, which is located in the back and it receives fewer people per day. That makes the air conditioning cool much more, so it is the coldest and quietest area. And when there is no one, the light remains off, unlike the rest of the hospital where there is always light. So yes, it is the typical scenario to have a good scare. They say that this university was built on top of an informal cemetery, but no one has ever been able to rule out or confirm that information. Supernatural occurrences are generally limited to the fact that a chair alone moved a little, some mannequin subtly changed its hand position, the typical shadows out of the corner of your eye, or that you hear students in any room and when you enter to check, there is no one. Nothing of remembrance except some cases like this that I'm going to tell you about. It's 6 p.m. and I just finished my surgery class. I said goodbye to my students, I picked up my things, and then I turned off the lights to leave. Few are those who dare to turn off the lights and then walk in the dark until the next corridor. Usually, they find not to leave last because when there is no one in the surgery area, you have the uncomfortable feeling of being watched or the feeling of being closely followed. Even the night guards turn a blind eye and they do not patrol the surgery area. They avoid it at all costs. But due to the gift that I have, I can perceive things that others cannot. So that feeling of being observed, although uncomfortable, I learned to tolerate it in a way. I am already used to it, so therefore my tolerance for the supernatural is quite high. Besides, I'm not afraid of the dark, because I know perfectly well that spiritual entities walk in the broad daylight and at any time. Only that in the silence and stillness of the night, it is that people without any special gifts can feel and see something that always was there. But keep in mind that if you can see them, they gaze back to you too. So I started to leave when I realized that I left my stethoscope in the room, so I went back to pick it up. At that moment, I see that the light in the room is still on, which is weird because I always make sure not to leave any lights on. So I went inside the classroom and saw that one of my female students was there, which is strange because if someone is afraid of being alone in that area are the students and especially her. She is terrified of the supernatural. It looked exactly like her, as if it were her twin. I asked, student's name, are you alright? 
How did you come back? What are you doing here alone? At that moment, I remember that I had just said goodbye to her 10 minutes ago and there was no way she could come back without me noticing her. It was the last class and I checked before leaving, so no one should have been there. She replied, I'm here studying for the class professor. When she looked at me, I could see her face well, and yes, she was exactly the same as my student, slender of medium height with long straight black hair, a thin nose, and wearing her typical royal blue doctor's uniform. Everything was the same except for one single detail, that the eyes of my student whom I've known for years are light brown. These instead were blue, a bright and beautiful but somehow scary glowing blue. After immediately making eye contact with what I was now sure was not my student, an unpleasant feeling of reflex and chills on my back invades me, accompanied by an instinctive fear that is a little more than bearable in the face of danger that you can't see, but you know is there. A feeling that I know well, and I know that only dark entities like demons have the ability to infuse and produce in you. So without thinking twice, I did what my parents and my brothers from church taught me. I said with authority and firmness, I know you're not student's name. In the name of Jesus Christ, get out of my classroom and never come back. The student shaped thing got up annoyed and said, Ash, that's right, I'm not student's name and I'm leaving. And then that thing went out through the glass door without even opening it. I haven't seen her since that day, but the little supernatural things are very common to me. Now Andres has a second story, so let's go ahead and read that story. Hi Daisy, it's me again, Andres. Greetings from Cartagena, Colombia. Here I am trusting you with another of my supernatural experiences. This happened to me with a well-known ghost by the people of Cartagena and Barranquilla. She is known as the Bride of Puerto Colombia. Puerto Colombia is between Barranquilla and Cartagena. They are two hours away from each other and you can reach it by car. The cities are connected by a highway known as the Seaway Road. They named it that way because the sea is always on the side of the road, even when you don't see by private car, it takes approximately 1 hour and 40 minutes to travel and about 3 hours by public transport. The road is in good condition, the drive is very smooth, almost without curves, well lit at the exit of Cartagena and well lit at the entrance of Barranquilla. But as usual, the route in between is quite dark but easy to navigate because the reflectors on the ground and the signs are in very good condition so you can see where you are driving at all times. Now this happened 15 years ago. A long time ago, the road was not so well lit and you had to be careful not to have an accident by falling off the road. 30 minutes before arriving to Barranquilla, you pass through a small town that borders the sea called Puerto Colombia, which is a common tourist destination. People go for a walk and enjoy the beaches of Puerto Colombia. What I'm about to tell you happened to me 8 years ago from now. At that time, I was 22 years old and I had just finished my medical degree. That's the average age of doctors here to get a degree. It did not take me long to get a job. At the time, I had my first job as a doctor, which was in a specialized ambulance of an intensive care unit. My job was to ensure that my patients arrived alive and well as possible to their destinations, which could be to another hospital, a CT center, an MRI center, cardiology units, burn units, etc. And this was not always within the same city, which is why taking patients from Cartagena to Barranquilla and other cities were very common. So living to the sound of the highway became common for a long time. When you travel enough time on the road, strange things start to happen to you, especially if you have a gift like mine, a gift that allows you to see things that others cannot. Today, I understand my gift perfectly, but back then, I was just beginning to understand how it worked. One night, we had just delivered a patient in Barranquilla. The journey went smoothly without any problems. My patient came in such a good condition and so awake that we even put a movie on the laptop that we sometimes had in the cabin. 
with the objective to distract her and make her trip more pleasant. We arrived in Barranquilla at 11 p.m. and after eating something and resting, we left back at 2 a.m. in the morning. In a medicalized ambulance, three people always travel, the doctor, a nurse, and the driver. The ambulance was wide and designed to perfectly fit three people in the front cabin, a driver, and two co-pilots. So there we were, the three of us laughing and chatting about life while traveling back home, when 15 minutes after leaving Barranquilla, just on the curve that leads to the entrance of Puerto Colombia, in the middle of the dark road, this pretty young lady in a wedding dress signals us to stop for being an ambulance we are forced to stop unless we consider the situation dangerous she looked like an ordinary person her white wedding dress without veil was quite noticeable we stopped on the side of the road worried because hey how frequently is it that a bride stops you in the middle of a highway at two in the morning something serious had to happen However, for security reasons, we never get off the car immediately without asking first. The lady started approaching the ambulance and as she got closer, we noticed that she was crying. Her wedding dress was a little dirty and her hairdo was a bit messed up. When she approached the window, I got an unpleasant feeling that something was not right. That woman had something very strange, something that for the first time I felt it gave me shivers down my back and the more the time passed a voice within me said with more and more intensity that there was something wrong are you okay asked the nurse the bride only answered are you going to barranquilla could you take me with you as the leader of the team both of the driver and the nurse stared at me waiting for my answer so i asked are you okay miss are you wounded what is your name she ignored my questions and said again, Are you going to Barranquilla? Could you take me with you? At this moment, my nurse and driver became nervous at the bride's strange and gloomy attitude. But seeing how I handled the situation, they calmed down. So I replied, Miss, we just left a patient with a skin infection. The back cabin has not been disinfected and there is no room in the front cabin. We can take you with us, but we will call the police and we will stay with you until they arrive. So they will take you to your destination. She didn't say anything and just looked at us with an empty look. She turned her back on us and started walking back to the entrance of Puerto Colombia. Then we quickly got off the vehicle to try to stop her, but in the five seconds it took us to disembark, she had disappeared. We used the searchlight to locate her, but there was no one, no trace of the bride or someone else, nor did she leave any footprints on the ground. This scared us a lot, and immediately we got back inside the ambulance, and when the police finally answered, I gave them the description of the bride and commenting on the situation and place we found her. They answered, Doctor, we believe you. That is the bride of Puerto Colombia. She is a ghost. We receive calls all the time about the same situation. A bride crying alone in the dark, asking for rides in the middle of the road. And then when they turn, she's gone. And if we arrive at that place, we never find anything. In any case that she gets into the vehicle, when the driver gets her to Barranquilla, she simply disappears from the seat. We hung up the phone quite nervously and just continued our trip talking about the situation. But in the next 10 minutes after that, it felt like someone was moving in the back of the ambulance. Realizing now what was happening, and now that I knew that thing was the bride's ghost, I told my crew, take deep breaths, don't look back, and you driver, drive calmly. And then I said, you are not welcome here. Immediately, the noise stopped and the rest of the trip went smoothly. Investigating later, we discovered that some time ago, a just married couple had an accident on that curve on their wedding night and the bride did not survive. We assume that is what we saw. I saw her again four more times throughout my trips to Barranquilla. The same woman with the same appearance asking to stop in the middle of nowhere at night. Of course, the other times when we saw her, now we didn't stop. 
as it was the same woman, the bride of Puerto Colombia. I hope you enjoy it. Please share it, Andres. Wow, Andres, that was, I had goosebumps all over my body once you heard those noises back in the ambulance. Oh my God. Wow. I would be shitting bricks. La verdad. Wow. 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 Please, of course, send more stories, Andres. I would love to hear more stories if you have any these were just super fascinating. Thank you so much for writing them in. Thank you. So now on to our next story. Hey Daisy, my name is Valeria. I work third shift at a retirement home for the elderly as a nurse. I've worked there almost a year and nothing paranormal has happened to me until this experience a couple of weeks ago. At the beginning, everything was okay. That night, only me and another coworker, Nancy, were there, and I chose to stay up front to answer call lights while Nancy went to the back of the building to do laundry. I started listening to music while finishing up some work on my computer when I heard someone coming down the hallway. Thinking it was Nancy, I asked, Hey, do you need any help back there? No answer. So I thought she might have had her headphones on. I got up and checked complete silence and of course nobody was there i decided to go to the back to the laundry room to tell nancy what i just heard rumor says that if you stop by the hallway where the rooms 400 418 are you might hear something or see someone so i'm muy curiosa i am very curious so i went to go check it out when i got to that side of the building i started getting goosebumps and a strange feeling of sadness brushed it off and continued walking until i got to room 418. nothing happened i didn't hear anything either until i turned around to go back to the hallway i heard a couple voices coming from that room which was not unusual since some residents leave their tv on when they go to bed what got me was that no one had lived there for months because strangely everyone that had lived there passed away within days of moving in Thank you for reading my story and God bless you. Thank you so much, Valeria, for writing in. Wow, girl, night shifts at hospitals seem terrifying. I'm sure you're on your toes throughout the shift. I actually had a friend that was a security guard at a hospital and he did night shifts and he would say that the elevators would open and close just randomly with no explanation. He would record and he'd be like, what the hell is going on? Like, this is creepy. And imagine in the night, everything is creepier in the night. So I could just imagine how creepy that must feel just seeing the elevator open and close without like no explanation maybe it's faulty like maybe there is some wiring have needing to be done i don't know but it was just creepy doctors nurses janitors people that work in the hospital night shift day shift i'm sure they have stories for days and if you guys have any of those stories please write them in because I like her bien curiosa y yo chismosa so I am curious. Please send them in. I would love to hear them. But thank you so much, Valeria. So now on to our next story. Hi, Daisy. My name is Mary. I love your channel and I watch it all the time. Thank you, Mary. I have a pretty scary story from when I worked in a hospital. Yes. <laughs> I was covering the night shift 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. It must have been around 9 p.m. when I finished with the patient and sent him back to his room. I worked in the radiology department. The room I was in is very open and there is no place to hide. We had automatic doors that opened when you pressed a button. I was with my back to the doors, finishing processing the study when I felt the doors opening and someone walking up to me. I was friends with the night supervisor and he would stop by to say hi and check if I needed anything. I assumed it was him. I felt someone grabbing my ponytail and lifting it and all of a sudden, my hair got pulled really hard. I turned around to confront who I thought was my friend and saw nothing. I can't tell you how fast I ran out of that room. After a while, I went back upstairs, terrified. 
Later in the week, I told my boss what happened and she told me she used to see black shadows at night in that same area. The cleaning ladies also told me that they don't like it there because chairs move by themselves and doors open and close all the time without any explanation. Also, the operating room is right under that department. They told me that when people die under anesthesia, they don't realize they're dead. No wonder they say hospitals are one of the most haunted places. Needless to say, I never covered the night shift by myself again. I changed careers and I'm no longer in the healthcare field. After that, I haven't had any more experiences, but my mom has told me endless stories. I will save those for another other time wow mary girl look at what was i just saying you guys mira it's no joke like hospitals death happens there trauma happens there so many emotion is present there and it will remain present there the energy will remain there so i am not surprised but i'm always fascinated at the same time hearing these stories whatever pulled your hair clearly wasn't good because they pulled your hair girl like like i would be offended like what the heck why you pull my hair like why but girl i'm telling you the cleaning ladies everyone that works night shift i'm sure have stories and let me know your mom's stories doesn't matter if it's not hospital related just write them in but thank you so much mary for your story now on to the next story hi daisy this story is kind of creepy but in a good way nine years ago when my mom was having bad stomach aches she went to the hospital and found out she was pregnant due to the complications my brother was born at five months my brother was born and he was small like your hand to your wrist so they put him in a recovery room with tubes and needles in him later on my brother passed away my parents were telling me they were praying to god to help them out and a few minutes later a doctor came and told my parents he might be able to revive my brother using an experiment but he won't be able to talk or walk. Years after, my brother can walk and talk. He just can't move the right side of his body much. A few years later, my brother got sick, so my parents went to the same hospital looking for his doctor. Once they asked for the doctor and gave them his name, the hospital lady said there was no record of a doctor under that name ever being in that hospital. I like calling my brother a miracle because he has had many close death or dangerous encounters and is completely fine. Like a car accident, he was the only one that wasn't harmed. Or when he cut a wire with a knife and there was a big spark of fire that he was close to but wasn't harmed. Now that I think of it, I want to know who is this guardian angel? I think it was my older sibling who passed away due to a miscarriage and is now looking down on my younger brother. Thank you and hope you and your family are doing well and keep up your great storytelling. Thank you so much. You wanted to be anonymous, that's why I didn't say their name. But oh, this story is so sweet. Wow. And that's like a miracle that is crazy the the fact that you guys returned to the hospital no record of that doctor that is a guardian angel for sure that is that's a story that's a movie like hollywood come on what you doing look at movie right here that is crazy and with this story i will leave things off here with this beautiful note i hope it resonates with someone someone out here maybe needing to listen to certain parts of there is hope and there's someone protecting you even though you think there's no one but anyways thank you so much for writing in anonymous so that was it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed if there's any spooky stories that you would like for me to share on my channel please send it in at daisyspooks at gmail.com i hope to hear from you guys very soon but other than that i hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys all in my next one bye